Hello and welcome back. This is the first of a multi-part series in conductors and voltage drop, where we look at the various aspects of power and voltage in a circuit. In this first module, we're going to look at a simple series circuit where you have two wires feeding a load. In the following videos in this series, we'll look at multiple loops, and then we'll look at an Edison three-wire circuit, and then in part four, an advanced Edison three-wire circuit. That's with all the good intentions, and well, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So we'll see how that all goes. In this particular video, we'll look at the voltage that's lost in the lines, or the voltage drop basically how much voltage is consumed by the resistance of our feeder wires. That will determine how much voltage we'll actually have at our load. We can then look at our total circuit power, our input power, and how much power will be consumed by the wires feeding our load. These are considering our losses. With that, we can look at how much power is actually being delivered to the load, and with all of those values, we can finally look at our circuit efficiency. So those are the goals for this video. Let's get on with it and see how we get along. Let's look at a more practical application. Here we have a standard North American 120 volt receptacle where it's fed by two wires, line one and line two N. The N would stand for neutral if it was a three wire system. But in this case, it's the return wire. So it's more appropriate to call it line two, where all of my current or my feed comes in on line one. And then if I was drawing any current, it would return back on line two or the blue wire. This type of problem looks more at line losses. Because if I have a piece of wire, depending on the length of the wire, that wire is going to have some resistance. The longer the wire, the more resistance my feeder wires are going to have. And the more impact that those feeder wire resistances will have on my output load or whatever it is that I'm plugging into the receptacle. We'll be looking at it some sort of generic load, something to plug into the receptacle. A load is usually something that either draws current in amps or wants to dissipate energy in watts, P, power, watts. For this example, let's take a little unit heater. Our little unit heater here is going to want to draw 12 amps. It could be any sort of generic load. It really doesn't matter. So once we plug our unit heater in, that's our load, the unit heater, then it's gonna start drawing 12 amps. Now my input source voltage is 120 volts. My current through my feeder wires, 12 amps, across 0.2 ohms, is going to use a little bit of voltage. We can represent this diagram by a simpler schematic. So here we have a source voltage of 120 volts, which is a standard North American residential voltage. Our wires, we're gonna represent those, our feeder wires, by two resistors, R1 and R2. And they're gonna have a very insignificant resistance of 0.2 ohms. Again, the further away my receptacle is from my source, my panel, the more resistance those wires are going to have. The cylinder on the end, labeled load one, well, that's just any sort of generic load, whatever that is. Again, in our example, we're gonna use a unit heater. And again, 
It's just a series circuit. So that when we plug our unit heater in, the current only has one path to follow. So my 12 amps will flow through my series circuit of R1, R2, and my load. Let's examine this circuit in a little bit more detail and calculate out some values based on the numbers we have. So here we have our simple circuit again, where we have two feeders, R1 and R2, feeding a load. And again, for simplicity, we'll plug in our little unit heater and it's going to draw 12 amps. Now in the previous problems, we went about by solving through resistance. But in these problems, what we really care about are voltages, currents, and powers. We're not really concerned about solving for the load resistance. It's just not important. All we really care about with the load is how much current or how much power it's consuming. And again, in this particular example, our load is going to draw 12 amps. Since our load's drawing 12 amps and our feeder wires, our one and our two, each have 0.2 ohms, we can calculate the voltage out for those two lines where each of them are going to have a 2.4 volt drop. We call this the voltage drop. This is the voltage that is dropped by the lines that are feeding the load. It's a series circuit. So we can now calculate the voltage to the load, where the voltage of the load is equal to our source, subtract our voltage drop which in this case is 120 take away 4.8 volts for a total of 115.2 volts. This is one of the things we have to consider as electricians is how much voltage are my feeder wires going to drop before I can actually use it at my load. We then have to compensate the size of the wires to reduce the resistance of the wires so that we reduce the voltage drop to maximize the voltage at the load. You have to consider the current or power of the load because the more current a line draws, the larger the voltage drop on those lines. Let's carry on. Now that we have the voltage to the load, we can calculate all the powers for the circuit. The source voltage of 120 volts has to supply 12 amps. So the source that has a total circuit power of 1440 watts. The load power can be calculated from the load voltage multiplied by the current, which in this case gives us 1,382.4 watts. How much power is coming in from the source, 1440, is different from how much power our load is actually dissipating, 1,382.4. That's because our feeder wires are actually going to heat up. Because it's a resistance and because current is flowing through that resistance, those wires are actually going to generate a little bit of heat. We call that the line loss or line loss power. That's the difference between how much our source is putting in and how much our load is actually able to dissipate. That's also the reason why we have to be careful when we're installing wires such as putting wires in conduit. If we put too many wires in conduit, then each of those wires is acting like a little heater and they're gonna generate heat or dissipate power. You have to compensate or allow that heat to escape 
you have to manage that heat if you wish. We could also calculate how much heat or power is being dissipated in the wires by simply multiplying the current through the wire by the voltage drop of the wire. In this case, each wire is going to dissipate 28.8 watts for the total of the 57.6 watts of line loss. Now that we have all the powers, we can actually calculate the efficiency of this circuit. We use the Greek letter eta here to represent efficiency where efficiency is equal to the power at the load or the output power over the total input power. Multiply that by 100. And this circuit works out to be about 96% efficient. The power that is dissipated or lost in the wires is energy that we do not want to lose. That's why we call it a loss. We cannot avoid line loss power. Let's take a look at another example with different numbers, shall we? Here's another circuit similar to what we just did. But this time, maybe the wires are a different length. So they're only 0.818 ohms each. Or 180 milli ohms, if you wish. Let's hook this up to a 220 volt source this time. And it's a different unit heater. So let's say it's drawing 20 amps current this time. Let's calculate all the voltage drops, the voltage to the load, the input power, the output power, the line loss power, and the efficiency. Well, we start off one of these problems. Since we have a current and a resistance, we can calculate the voltage drops on each line, which will give us 3.6 volts per line for a total voltage drop of 7.2 volts. Again, if you look at the circuit and follow the current through, you'll see that it's a series circuit where the total voltage is going to equal both the voltage drops and the load voltage. So if we want the load voltage, all we have to do is take our source, subtract the drop, and we'll end up with the load voltage, which in this case is 212.8 volts. Now that we have a load voltage, we can calculate all the powers. Total circuit power, ETIT, well, that's going to give us 4.4 .4 kilowatts. The load power or the output power, well, just multiply the voltage by the current and that'll give us 4,256 watts. The difference between those two will be our line loss, which gives us 144 watts dissipated by our two wires together, which means that each wire is going to dissipate 72 watts individually. Now that we have our input power and our output power, we can calculate our efficiency. Efficiency is equal to power out over power in, multiplied by 100%. And this circuit as well is running around 96%, but 96.72% to be precise. Again, these are a more practical problem where we're actually looking at our voltage drop due to our wire resistance, the line losses due to the wires or feeder wires dissipating heat and then how that all impacts our output voltage and power. I hope those example problems helped you understand the concepts of line loss, voltage drop, and circuit efficiency.
in the next video in the series, we're going to look at a double loop. And we'll use the principles of our basic circuit fundamentals to solve this type of circuit. So we'll use Kirchhoff's current law. We'll solve for all the voltages in the circuit. And then we'll solve for all the powers in the circuit. And just as we've done in this particular video, we'll then look at our overall circuit efficiency. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you like these videos, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. That encourages me to carry on with creating more content. Have a good day.